Ladies and gentlemen, assalamu alaikum. Very good morning to all of you. Uh, today we're going to talk about creative writing and uh, specifically narrative writing. Uh, narrative writing deals with telling a story. Now this story could be uh, this fantasy or fiction. But a good story is that which, an, which has an element of fiction in it. The most important thing about narrative writing is the plot, the story. The story is the skeleton on which the whole thing is built. Now imagine there is a hunchback, Kubra. Uh, and you put flesh on that, blue eyes, handsome, curly hair, still remains a kubra, still remains a anshwa. So you have to have a good plot. All other things come second, a good plot. Okay. A good plot does not deal with a common person doing a common thing in a common way. Why? Because who would be interested? Why should they read that story? It's about a common man doing a common thing in a common way. Uh, I normally tell my students, look, a dog biting a man is not a story. A man biting a dog is a story. How come? Hey, do you know this story? You know my uncle? What happened last evening? He caught his poodle and it bit him across the neck. Huh? Bit him? Why? So there has to be a reason. Only then it becomes a story. So the first thing is that you have to decide on a good story. What style you use, other things all come second. Okay. Now, why do we go and see a film? Million dollar industry. Why make a film? We go and see a film because we want to share that experience. Whatever is happening there on the film, somehow you are transported from the theater into that world. That experience becomes your experience. Now, please remember, it's got nothing to do with high sounding, pompous language, flowery language. That's not the case at all. Whatever vocabulary you've got, you have to learn how to do. That is important. A good plot, a good narrative has to have drama in it. And what is drama? It has to have action, conflict, a crisis, and a turn. You cannot have a good story if there is no conflict. The conflict can be between the good guys and the bad guys. But the best conflict is within the mind and soul of the person. How does the person feel? That's about it. Let me just give you an example. I tr I've tried this in my class. I say, okay boys, girls, I want you to think about the plot. I'll give you 15 seconds to think about the plot. What comes to your mind? I want you to think about a narrative, a story which revolves around the theme of love. Of course, there are smiles there. I said, okay. What did you write? What did you think about? How many of you thought about Mother, seventy percent hands go up. Boy-girl relationship, 
20 percent i said how how do i know you have to have a different look all of you writing oh i love my mother my mother is this my mother is that ha 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 one script after another then i pick up a page and i said wow the opening line of that is i hate my mother i wish she were dead and the examiner says who what let me read this because it's different because there has to be a reason the writer is going to take the reader right into his heart and in, into his soul and tell you what the whole thing is i'm going to just read four or five lines of one of them this is on this theme it's on love i will never forget you the old man said a tear rolled down his leathery cheeks i'm getting old and i can't take of you anymore take care of you anymore with his head tilted to one side monsieur dupuri watch his master woof 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 he wagged his tail back and forth wondering what's he talking about huh? love let's analyze this little thing uh, a tear rolled down his leathery cheeks a good style is where you use adjectives and adverbs why what does he want to convey what does the writer want to convey when he uses that leathery cheeks well it means rough not so smooth like the, the cheeks of a little baby why who oh, he wants to emphasize on the man is old why emphasize it must be important otherwise there's no point in writing you do use adjectives you do use adverbs to bring color to the writing but it has to have a reason otherwise there is no point just two more lines please uh, he wagged his tail back and forth wondering what is he talking about See? Um, he tilted with his head tilted to one side now this is a typical human characteristic if i ask you oh, what did you do I and mean, you don't understand what i'm saying what's he talking about what's he talking about okay i can't take care of myself anymore let alone take care of you the old man cleared his throat pulled a handkerchief from his pocket and blew his nose with a mighty blast does the writer want to tell us that the man was suffering from a cold huh i don't think so you see the man the old man cleared his throat does he have some irritation in the throat no way so why ah he wants to bring home this thing that the man was very old and he's trying to rub that in why not that in because it must be having some bearing on the plot otherwise there is no point in that style right one is a big no no which is the informative style where students normally write that that can never create an effect information is you tell it sir I went to my father was very angry with me angry with me. I can't feel anything Don't tell show it He stood there with his hands on his side he stared at me with his bloodshot eyes his I could see him clenching his fist Now this is showing and what does it showing indicate the father was very angry there's no need to tell show it describe it as you go along only then that effect will be created so informative style out 
if you want your reader to live in that to experience that described it so so that he is dragged into the whole thing he is sucked into that world he experiences that we want be reading what horror stories huh? you are tucked in your bed in your warm bed like so and you read that creepy how come because you have left your bed and in the wings of your imagination you're in that particular world you are experiencing that good narrative writing is sharing that experience with your reader you see movies there's a movie i won't name the movie i i've seen it 10 times and every time i weep I must you say so you mean I say yes because I can experience it you know I I can be there it's not character a y z undergoing that I am experiencing that I live in that character you have to make the reader undergo an experience you have to live in that character if you can do that the wow factor Wow, you've done it! It's like saying, "You're a masaya." Go ahead and thoroughly enjoy it. So that is what we yeah. have. Focus on visuals, images. Here we just had this clear the throat. There's an image which comes in one's mind. Okay. Um, blew his nose with a mighty blast said, oh yeah i've i've seen that happening old people when they are you know full of emotions and i am reminded as a lovely sight you know uh, at the rusuti of the girl you know the father at one level is happy at the other level he knows that look at you know My mom, my, my my daughter is not going to be here with me. She's a mood, and I've seen old people <laughs> crying and you know blowing their nose. Then we don't say the the father was very sad. Why? Because that's no image comes to my mind. Sad. But when I focus on the visual, then the image things. become clear i can experience that okay plunge into a story never ever say once upon a time there was this there was a king he had three daughters this is what why are you telling me that i'm not experiencing anything why should i read that how does a movie start there is there's a character the characters come on the stage they talk and while you while the character talk you come to know you know sagira i've had enough of you i have had enough i wish i didn't have a son like that come on boy come on do something man no i didn't say anything uh, two or three things are made clear i am the father he is the son I am angry. He's on the receiving end. You don't say there was a man. He had a son. <laughs> you don't do it like that. The story will slowly unfold itself. You have to be patient. You have to be patient. Just have one major character and two or three minor ones. Don't have too many. characters in your so you know right writing a novel whatever you're going to write for your competitions or whatever what 400 500 normally this is the limit so you have to develop a character one of the things we as teachers and examiners love is this formula learning wisdom through experience the character main character if it's you 
is a negative character in the beginning. Supposing you are proud, your pride comes up. Proud or jealous or whatever. So one thing happens. Then perhaps becomes worse. Then there's a crisis, a turning point in your life and you become a better human. It's on a good note. Learning wisdom through experience is a formula which examiners love. That's all. Certain topics which you ought to not to. Anything unrealistic. You know, aliens from outer space, jungle tracks. I met this lion in the forest with my bare hands. I tore his jaws apart. Nonsense. I'd rather have somebody say, yeah, yeah, look at that. And I wet my trousers. I would appreciate that far more than, because that's more realistic. This you have to understand. Element of realism. Why? Because if you don't have that, you cannot transport the reader into that world. Achha, why do you, why do normally people dislike the Punjabi movies? Nothing to do with Punjabi language. I, I'm, I love Punjabi. I speak Punjabi with my friends. But why? The reason it, it is so fanciful, so unrealistic. We go to the village, where do, where do we see this big fat actresses dancing about in colourful sort of things? We don't see that. The story has to be realistic. Every character has to behave in a realistic, lifelike manner. Classics, evergreen classics, are those which deal with human relationship. How people get along with one another. Because we live in a society, it's all about relationship. And if the relationship is a common sort of a thing, every day one, then I'm not interested. If mama goes, if mom behaves like mom and you behave like a no problem. It's the difference. As a teacher, I would not be interested in the goody goody boy right in the front, or the girl, you know, Panch Bakat Ki Namazi, you know, comes first in class, very nice girl. I'm not interested. I'd rather be interested in that boss sitting right there. When I look at him, I see his dirty vest every day. He keeps staring at me, his mouth is always open. There's something. He has no friends. I don't see him talk. I would like to know what makes him tick. It's his life I'm interested in. Not the goody sort of thing. There's no interest value. The plot has to be interesting. And please remember it's got nothing to do with how good is your English. Pompous language is Never accept. It's unrealistic. You can't do that. The opening and the ending are extremely plunge in the story. Never start off with once upon a time. One day we made a program. No, 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 no. Jump into it. Plunge into it. The story will slowly unfold itself. And once you start writing, just keep keep on thinking how you're going to end it. Let me just share two examples of the ending. You're writing a story about babysitting, right? And your aunt or uncle or whatever has said, could you please look after your nephew is this eight year old very nice very sweet angelic face and you say uncle go and have a nice time you deserve it you've been under such a lot of stress you enjoy yourself i look after him 
Nu și uite ce după coacea în lăbărciun. Alegă altfel. Ok. Now, the story is, as they leave, this little angel becomes a devil. And one incident after another, he's made your life miserable. Finally, you reach that saturation point and you pull him upstairs and you say, you lie there then. You stay there. Beat the hell out of you if you do anything. A good style should have three types of sentences. The statements, the ones which come in the, as a form of the full stop. The exclamatory exclamations or the interrogatives which come in the form of a question. You have to play with that. You should also have short sentences and long sentences depending on the mood. Supposing I'm angry with somebody. So a sentence is going to be short. It's not going to be a long, lengthy sort of a thing. So depending on, on that. Also, I like uh, you to note that try to create an atmosphere. For instance, we are talking of a, of a sad situation. It, it would be suicidal if you have the setting, let us say spring, flowers, birds, blue skies. No way. Then have it in autumn or winter. If it's happy, have it in spring. Depending on what time, dawn or dusk, depending on the situation. Also, don't rush. Create an atmosphere. Let me just read a few lines and tell you what do we really mean by creating an atmosphere by using images. Start of a short story. The yellow eyes bored into mine as the lips parted, wrinkled and drew into a silent snarl, showing the great fans in the moist cavern of the mouth. He was without doubt the most ill-kept, the most beaten up and the biggest sled dog that I'd ever seen. His entire bearing bristled with threat, but it was the almond-shaped wolf eyes that most clearly showed his aggressiveness. This dog was wild and would not hesitate to go for the throat. As far as information is concerned, it can be done in one little sentence. There was a wild-looking dog. Hey, I can't feel that. Why do you know all these images? Yellow eyes, lips parted, whistled with threat, would not hesitate to go for the throat. Why build that? Because you want the reader to be sucked into that world so he can feel that brute of a dog. Slow it down. Don't rush. Create atmosphere. So finally, good plot. Different from the others, theme of human relationship and feelings, how people get along with one another. One major character, develop his character, action, crisis, start, end, use of direct speech occasionally, don't Tell, show, describe, variety in your sentence structure, short sentences, long sentences, statements, exclamatory sentences, interrogative sentences, bring them together, unexpected ending, use of images, visuals, extremely important and avoid pompous flowery language. In the 18th century, you could use that rather than saying, I can't come to my office today because my mother died. They would say, sir, the hand that rocked the cradle kicked the bucket last night. That was how they did it in the 18th century. Rather than saying the sun, you know, they would say, 
Apollo on his fiery chariots rode through nonsense, just nonsense. Just whatever vocabulary you have, use that. And please remember, final piece of advice, create interest value. Make the reader read on. And the best test is, if you've got a page or a paragraph and somebody snatches that away, you say, come on, give it to me. I would like to know what happened next. I want to read on. That is how it has to be done. So, good luck in your writing. You can do it. Enjoy your writing. That's the final thing. Thank you.